up. You've got Cast Kim and Cat Kim here today. We're going to talk to you about character building. So five tips for character building. When you're doing character building, this is really, I feel like, what makes or breaks a story, even more so than plot. You can have a mediocre plot and really amazing characters, and people are going to still care about your story. If you have a really excellent plot and a really full world, but characters that people don't care about, that don't feel like real people, and you can't get your reader invested, right? Um, so five tips. Number one, write it down. So my number one tip when building characters is to have a notepad or like one of the printable worksheets on my website um, that kind of gives you some of the basic details for the character. So for me, if I write down somebody has like, you know, azure eyes or like uh, cobalt hair, I don't know, these are like ridiculous things that I probably wouldn't say, but you know, you might um, depending on how like, you know, beautiful your language is or how poetic and stuff. Um, but anyways, anytime I use a descriptor for a character's physical appearance, I'll note that down. And then usually I'll put like tally marks next to them. So if I mention their blue eyes, I'll put a tally mark so that next time I can mention their broad shoulders or their full head of hair or their gray streaks or you know what I mean. Um, that way you're not overusing things, but you can also reuse the same adjectives correctly for characters um, throughout the story. Uh, I also like to note things like... Um, where they're from, how they met the character, uh, just stuff that if you, you know, like we all think we're going to remember it, right? Like, oh, this is my story. This is my character. I'm going to remember it. But, you know, as, uh, as Matt's uh, coffee mugs say in his store, uh, you sometimes end up writing a trilogy when you think you're writing a standalone. Oops. Uh, you don't want to have people looking at your books and then there's just these differences like oh this character that had you know bright green eyes in the first story has muddy brown eyes in the second story like did they shape shift their eye color I mean maybe they did it's anything could be anything in writing but um you want to not be wasting your time having to go back through your own books to find these details right anytime you have to pause and hunt for something is time that's getting taken away from your writing forward so if you can just note it then you're good to go so write it down so that you don't end up having to waste a lot of time looking up stuff about your own characters. <laughs> All right, number two, don't waste time on superfluous. I probably said that wrong. We'll say extraneous <laughs> details. Um, so don't waste time on details that aren't really going to matter. I know that there's all these different questionnaires that people like to fill out about like, oh, your character's favorite color, their favorite animal, their best childhood memory. And, you know, some of it definitely has its place, like maybe the memory stuff, because it does kind of build the character. But let's be honest, if you're taking like a 100 questionnaire thing about your characters, you're probably procrastinating. You're probably not actually character building. Um, I think that the only things that you need to be figuring about figuring out about your characters or questioning about your characters is what's going to inform your story. So unless you're writing a scene where they're like doing 20 questions or like they're getting to know each other and they're asking weird things like what's your favorite animal, you probably don't really need to know that. You probably don't need to know your character's sun sign unless it's something that matters in the story, right? So don't waste time building up these like laundry lists of details about characters unless it's going to be valuable to your book because otherwise you're you're just taking time away from what you could be doing which is writing or creating dialogue or if anything when people ask me how to fluff up their characters more or like put more depth into them you know make them more well-rounded I might give them a writing exercise such as what's a normal day in their life like or maybe write out their best childhood memory because those things I think are more likely to inform how your character acts than something like their birth stone. Okay, number three, mannerisms. So each character should have distinct mannerisms, whether they're somebody who talks with their hands or somebody who like rubs their nose a lot or somebody who's got their hands in their hair all the time um, or maybe they walk a certain way or maybe they posture a certain way when they're angry. Right? Every character has a tell. So think about, this is an exercise that I sometimes like to do. It's kind of silly. Um, but I like to pretend my characters are all playing poker. And what is their tell? Like, what do they do when they're happy? What are they going to do when they know that they're losing? What are they going to do when they're bluffing? Uh, so you'll notice I do a lot of um, 
mannerism things in Wilders, like Alyssa is constantly like braiding and unbraiding her hair, braiding and unbraiding, braiding and unbraiding. It's what she does when she's stressed out. And then we see as she's growing as a character that she kind of calms it down. She's like trying to be more mature and not do that. So she'll like sit on her hands and stuff instead. Um, so it allows for like some character changes and growth throughout the series, but it also is a very distinct tell for the readers. Like, oh, she's stressed out right now. She's trying to go for her hair. Um, and it's just a different way to show that without having to say like, oh, she was really upset. <laughs> um, so having mannerisms that they go to, whether it's happy mannerisms, angry, sad, nervous, anxious, um, having a couple specific mannerisms for each character can really help make those characters seem more full. Um, number four, catchphrases or style of speaking. So I think something that I've brought up a lot in these videos is that your character should sound different, right? Like I shouldn't sound like the person next to me. Um, I probably don't sound like the boss that I've worked with. I don't sound like my best friend. We have different ways of talking, different colloquialisms that we use because maybe we came from different areas or maybe our grandpappy said something different than her grandpa, right? Um, so think about what their style of speech is. Are they somebody who really takes their time? Or are they somebody who just fires off words really quick and other people have to cut them off so that they don't just talk forever? Or are they somebody who's constantly cutting other people off and maybe they're working on that? Or maybe they're not working on that because they're selfish. Like it's, it's just hard to say, right? There's so many different things that you can do with a character's speech that isn't just dialect. Because dialect, writing a dialect is pretty tricky and I would recommend not writing a dialect unless you're familiar with it or you can make sure that you're really consistent with it. And sometimes really heavy dialects get, um, they can bog down the reader, so they take away more than they add. So something to consider when you're looking at the speech patterns is how can you weave in a style of speech without making it too heavy as well. Um, and then I usually like to have some characters have catchphrases. Maybe somebody says actually a lot, like, well, actually right? Like they're like man or woman splaining or person splaining all the time. Or maybe there's somebody who is hesitant. So a lot of what they say has like ellipses, but not so many that it gets obnoxious, but you know, enough that you get the feeling of like, they're not really sure what they're saying, or they're not really comfortable speaking in this situation. Um, so the way that people speak and the way that their speech might change in different situations can be really telling for your character. And then number five, Okay, so this one's maybe a little bit of a tricky thing, but writing diversity. So if you're going to write a character that is different from yourself, which a lot of us do, um, I think that I know there's a whole bunch of controversy against the idea of uh, like people reading it for sensitivity, right? To make sure you're not doing something that's um, offensive. So my personal thing that I do is I write from my own perspective for my, my main character. Um, they're all going to be pretty typical straight white girls because that's what I am. That's my life experience. It's pretty boring, but it is what it is. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's what I know best. But I also believe that we do need to have diversity and normalize, you know, um, people aren't all the same, right? If everybody looks the same, if everybody's the same, it's not realistic either because our world is not just this like whitewashed world or it shouldn't be, right? Um, so if you are gonna write characters that are diverse, I do recommend if, they're, if you're telling their story, which I don't think you should tell someone's story that's not your own within reason, right? Um, Make sure that you have a sensitivity reader, especially if your main character is somebody who's had a totally different life experience than you. You know, I would say the same thing if you're like a man writing like a sex scene and it's from a woman's point of view, like have a woman beta read it. Um, or if you're a straight writer who's best writing like the best friend in the story is coming out or something, you should probably have somebody who's had that experience read it just to give you feedback or more than one somebody. Uh, you know, as much as like there are characters and we have a lot of ownership over them, we don't have ownership over every experience in the world. And I think it's important that we're aware of that. You know, if you're writing characters that are different than you, you want to highlight them in the most accurate way possible. You want to make the world more inclusive, not more myopic. Okay, 
that's probably a little bit controversial. So sorry, I try to stick to like pretty easy topics on these things that are not going to raise anybody's, you know, fur or whatever. I don't know what, what I'm trying to say. But um, I just think it's important to just think about these things when you're writing your characters, though. You don't want to be that person that writes a character that is like stereotypical and uninformed and does more harm than good. Um, okay, so <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, that was like a whole soapbox. So number one, write down the information. You don't want to waste your time looking back through your manuscripts to make sure you're getting your own details correct. Number two, don't waste time on details that aren't going to matter. Don't take like a thousand quizzes about your character. It's unless it's in your book, it probably doesn't really matter. Or unless it informs a choice that they make actively, it probably really doesn't matter. Um, number three, every character should have distinct mannerisms, like um, like how Cass Kim, when she's thinking, her eyes roll around in her head like a pinball machine. Um, or also they should have their own distinct style of speaking and catchphrases, but do it within a a way that isn't like heavy handed, right? So it needs to feel more natural. If you get too heavy handed, it can take away from the actual reading experience or the readability of the storyline. And then number five, if you're writing diversely, make sure that you're doing it conscientiously and have beta readers that can look at it from that perspective um, or sensitivity readers that can look at it from that perspective depending on how big of a role that diversity is playing within your story and within the life experiences of your characters. Uh, okay, so those are my character building five fast tips. I hope that you guys have a great weekend and be safe. Okay, that's all I got today.